let's demystify and clarify some technical terminology. And I've bunged in here, that's not one of them, I bunged, I bunged in here a bunch of kind of, I guess, fitness testing type images to give us a bit of a start point. The first thing I want to address here is the notion of quantitative. And I'm going to say it that way very deliberately, quantitative, mostly because I don't want to mess up the spelling. What is quantitative data? And I think what a great example would be here. We've got a direct gas analysis going on here. We are getting a very specific score readout. There's no opinion interpretation. So what have we got here? We've got scores. We've got, could be a ratio. It could be, for example, a result. In this case, it's going to be obviously an oxygen consumption reading. It could be a time. It could be a measure. This is our measure of oxygen consumption. This is what uh, quantitative data is. Why? Because that data is numerical. Anything which comes in the form of numerical order, and numerical order, it could be ordinal data actually, but anything that comes in numerical format is what we refer to as quanti quantitative data. Now, I want to stress to you that one of the words we would use to describe this kind of data is objective. Another way of kind of describing objective is that there is an absence of opinion. So think about our direct gas analysis here, direct uh, absence of opinion. Think about our direct gas analysis over here. Whatever this score is, nobody cares what this person here, his opinion of that score is. Well, that's not what we're interested in. We're interested in what is the score and we're gonna use that score to inform whether it's training or recovery, whatever it happens to be. So there's no opinion interpretation uh, prediction. These are objective numerical scores of a specific level. Okay, so that's what we're talking about with our quantitative data. Now, what I wanna do here is I wanna borrow our objective word. I'm not gonna make this very pretty. I wanna bring it over here and I wanna, in fact, I tell you what, Let's not do that. Let's take the word objective now and let's actually describe what that means. Well, in objective means there's no interpretation. So can you see the link between quantitative data and objective data? They tend to be one and the same thing. And they typically are a direct measure, a direct measure. So we've got the example here of our um, direct gas analysis, that's a direct measure of VO2 consumption, okay? Whereas if we do something like a multi-stage fitness test, that is a prediction of VO2. That is not objective in that in that context. So we've, we've covered our quantitative, we've covered our objective. Where I'd like to go next with this is I wanna sort of go down the opposite road and we want to look at qualitative, qualitative, data okay so what is qualitative data let's let's stress that well first of all it's typically non-numerical there are actually a couple of ex exceptions to that but i'm not going to get into that here it is non-numerical secondly it's what we describe as subjective not objective but subjective so that's going to become a really important term for us in a second but the key thing related to uh, subjectivity is it relates to opinions it relates to opinions, which by the way, every time I write the word opinions, I only see the word onions. I don't do you get that. I just see the word onion. Is it me? That's subjective judgment, isn't it? It's my opinion of the word opinion, is it looks like the word onion. It's not a fact, it's not a number, it's just James talking guff. But anyway, I've forgotten what I was gonna talk about now. Brilliant, well done James, you've ruined this tutorial. It's about opinions and it could be about interpretations. I don't know what the word interpretations look like. It looks like the word interpretations, doesn't it really? Um, and finally, it's linguistic. So typically, you're going to get qualitative data from, for example, observing a performer. I could look at this performer here and I could say, uh, I think she enjoyed that. Okay, so I think she really valued the measure of the sit and reach test. That is qualitative opinion based. I could ask her, out of 10, how much did you enjoy that experience? She might say to me, seven. And I'm glad to say, to be fair, that's quantitative data, isn't it? I'll rephrase that question. I might say to her, how did you find the sit and reach test? And she said, well, James, I really enjoyed it and I felt my score was better, etc." That's qualitative data, right? Uh, hence me saying qualitative and quantitative are a bit overlapping. Now, where I'd like to go with this, and you're probably going to be able to predict this yourselves, we want to take the word subjective and we want to draw that out, not literally. Um, subjective, what does that mean for us? So, in fact, I don't like that circle around it. What does subjective mean for us? And when we talk about subjective, we're now talking about opinions. <laughs> There's my favorite word again. We're now talking about assumptions. We're now talking about observations. 
we're now talking about surveys. So these might not be so much to do with measuring, so well, they're not to do with measuring something, but about surveying something. So here's our questionnaire example. It's health and safety questionnaire, it doesn't matter. This is asking for someone's view, opinion, prediction maybe. And what we find with um, these sort of uh, situations here is that these, this of course is, is, is less pure data than a quantitative. I'm not saying it's not good. It's good to ask this person's opinion about the score that she achieved. That gives us feedback, it gives us insight, but it ultimately is a different format of information. Now I just wanna stress again, observations, surveys, or questionnaires, these are typically qualitative subjective data. So just think about when you do, I don't know, I mean, I'm moving into another area here, you do have to be synoptic, but let's take about sports psychology and doing personality or anxiety tests, things like that. You might just answer what you want people to see, right? And that's not necessarily the case. In fact, folks, it leads to issues of validity. And that's where I wanna finish off here. I wanna to talk to you about validity. And I want to and I want to talk about reliability because these are critical terms, especially when we're talking about fitness tests. So validity first, folks. Let's make absolutely sure. Validity is a test, say, that it measures what it claims. So let's take a hand grip dynamometer. It it cl it claims to measure max and static strength. But does it do that for the whole body? Arguably not. What about a vertical jump, a sergeant test? Does it measure whole body power? No, it might measure leg power. What about the sit and reach test? Well, it might measure only lower back and hamstring flexibility. Maybe that's what it measures. So maybe there's issues of validity. Whereas what we've got here is this is really valid, right? Unless maybe this person's not a runner. Maybe it's less valid then. But where we're looking at reliability, this is a different notion. Reliability st states that results are consistent or need to be consistent. So if we retest, assuming nothing's changed or adaptation or injury, results are consistent if repeated. So if we get very variable results, and I'll give you a good example of this. I don't know if you've come across it before, but there's something called BIA. I won't get technical about it, but it's called bioelectrical impedance analysis, sometimes called spectroscopy. But anyway, if you, it's one of these things that you hold out in front of you, you put your hands on it, it sends a little current through your body and then predicts your um, fat percentages and your lean tissue and all this other stuff, it gives different results every time you do the thing, okay? So how can it be? It's got low reliability because the technology behind this is relatively cheap, relatively simple, it's accessible, it's practical, but we can't take it as a reliable measure of someone's body fat percentages. It's an indication, right? It's an indication. We may end up taking something like an average. So these are the key terms I wanna get across you. Now, just to finish off with, I sort of missed what I meant to do right at the start here. Just make sure you can differentiate between lab tests and field tests. Our direct gas analysis is a lab test. Our sit and reach test is a field test. Our wind gate test, which we don't really look at much in this course, but our wind gate test sort of sits in between. It's more of a lab test, but it's got sort of, you can sort of do it in the field as well. Just remember that in the field means that you do it in your sporting session. You don't have to go to a lab, unlike, say, direct gas analysis. Hope that's useful. Cheers.